Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I'm welcome to my channel. I'm operating from the UK around the world and thank you for passing by first time. You can click the thumbs up, the thumbs down, you can share, you can subscribe, you can interact with my subscribers, they're a friendly bunch. And you can leave a comment, you can even email me. All the details are in the um, description below. Anyway, today I wanted to talk to you about what a lockdown is going to feel like. I mean, it's happening in different parts of the world. I think it's already, ha it's already happening in parts of America. We know it's in Italy, it's happening in France, and now it's imminent in the UK. And people are not quite sure what to expect. expect. So if we model it off of France, um, France's, well, I shouldn't say France's. Did you say France's? Anyway, if we model it off of France, um, we'll have a rough idea of what to expect. Um, I showed you a video a couple of days ago. It was entitled Jamaica, a Jamaican family in China. And they were on lockdown. And I, and I, and I would imagine that is an extreme lockdown. Um, whereas in France is a bit more lenient, they're allowed to walk the dogs, they're allowed to, you know, provide and they've got a letter to show that they have to go and get a prescription or a um, essential food that they're allowed to go. Um, the UK, but they must have ID. That is the key. Now, the reason why in the UK now, and they're focusing on London, if we are following the French model, Everybody they stop will have to have ID if you're on the street. So you have to make sure you walk with your ID. Otherwise, you do not know where they're going to put you or what they're going to do with you. This is a situation where they have free license to do anything. So make sure you know if there is a lockdown, Boris Johnson is saying everyone, and he repeats everyone, what does he say, must follow the advice to protect themselves and the wider population. Now, when you have to listen to precisely to the words that people say. Now, as you know, with um, the Brits, we have um, a lot of different flavours to our language. It's not direct. It can be very flower, flowery. It can be very subtle. It can be quite... Um, it, has, it, it can have different meanings. I mean, they reckon the English language has the most um, meanings to each word. So when you hear... Um, when you hear, like, the Prime Minister speak... You have to really hone on, keep hone in keenly on what he's saying. Now, when he says everyone, I repeat everyone. I have to keep looking at this to get the right wording. Must follow the advice to protect themselves and the wider population. Now, that advice is imminently going to be the lockdown. And they, when they tell you that you are not allowed to leave your house unless you are an essential worker, which will probably be the criteria, essential workers will be able to leave their homes. Um, if you've got a letter or a prescription that you've picked up or you've telephoned through and you've printed off, now is the time you need a printer at home, I would imagine. Um, you're going to need to carry that with you. And you're going to need ID. And I think if you live in some of the secluded areas where the police are unlikely to be anyway, or the military, you are allowed to go out and exercise and walk your dog. But in a densely populated London, I would imagine it's going to be strict lockdown. And if you are on the street and you don't have a valid reason, you are setting yourself up to be placed in quarantine or jail for defiance of not obeying the law. You can't say, oh, we just going to see my girlfriend. Oh, I just popped in to see a friend. Oh, I just popped out to get cigarettes. Oh, I just... No! You, this is no dibby-dibby business. 
This is no mucking around. This is not up for negotiation. So don't try and be defiant and say, well, you know, I'm just going to do this or I can do this or I'm not no wrong with this. And there is no excuses. In a military shutdown, lockdown or what they call martial law, there is no excuses. If they say you must not be on the street, you stand the penalty if you are found on the street for any reason whatsoever other than what is written on a piece of paper that has been directed from a manager of your job where you're an essential worker or a doctor or a hospital. You could even say, boy, you know, my daughter is sick. I have to go to the hospital. You better make sure you've got a letter to show that you're going to the hospital. If you say your daughter is sick, as far as they're concerned, you should be with your daughter and you should be living in that house and not come out. You can't say, oh, I'm going to go and look for my girlfriend. Oh, oh, I'm going to look for my woman. Oh, my wife, blah, blah, blah. Now is not the time. Now is not the time to play around. I think this lockdown is going to take place in London first and then it'll probably spread um, nationwide. But anyway, um, <coughs> so <coughs> went down the wrong side of my throat. <coughs> I have to go and get some water. So anyway, in France, um, like I've said, um, I've said all the other bits that they've said, but you also have to be one meter apart. And they, I was watching Euro News today. And if you're in a market or a shop, you have to be one between one metre and two metres apart from each other. So there's a whole leap of space. I don't know if they're going to, well, if you're not allowed out, it doesn't really apply. I understand that the uh, military are going to be outside supermarkets, making sure there's only a certain amount of people going into the supermarket and a certain pe amount of people coming out. I've got a tickle in my throat. <clears throat> okay, so it's ironic because where I work, we have, um, we have you know, you're supposed to be following official guidance, but you know, we still got quite a few people in the office. So, um, we, but I guess we're not on lockdown yet. So, I don't know when the rules of one meter apply. It's quite one meter is quite a big large distance I'd imagine you'd need a pretty big office for everybody to be a meter apart um, let me see what else so you must respect the rules you must respect the rules the military takes over rumors are that it's part of the WHO UN agenda 2130 depopulation plan which reminds me of the book. I don't know how many of you have read the book by Robert Harris, The Second Sleep, where the UK population was 66 million and they brought it down to 6 million. I don't know how because it was some pre-apocalypse something or other. It's a fiction. But when they were talking, you know, that agenda, that depopulation, it reminded me of that, you know. <clears throat> but that was like based in six in 800 miles 800 years time and I don't know um, reason for the lockdown is to spread the minimum spread of the virus um, it's ironic because germs bacteria and virus proteins are meant to be created inside your body by your body and are not contagious the only way to get a foreign bacteria and antiviral tissue inside your body is via an injection isn't that interesting but we're supposed to be protecting our side from external viruses. So who's injecting who with the virus? I'd like to know. So Boris says, um, we've got to follow the advice to protect ourselves and the wider population. He's going to do the right thing at the right time, but right by whose definition? And I think that was his way of saying, yes, there is going to be a lockdown because he was responding to um, somebody in today's um, 
you know, when they asked questions, he was responding to one of her, one of this lady's questions, or one of her questions was, you know, when is London going to go on lockdown to keep everybody safe? And his response was, the right thing at the right time. So we know, even though it hasn't come out of his mouth, in those precise words, indirectly, that's why I'm saying sometimes when you listen to these um, politicians speak, you really have to pick up on the subtlety of the language. <clears throat> he says he will follow scientific advice. What is the scientific advice? Is that the pharma companies? Is he following their advice? We don't know. So he, he's, he was thanking families for the sacrifice of not being able to work, for, you know, being economically drained, living a life in isolation. But he will not hesitate to go further and faster in the days and weeks ahead. So we know. He's already told us without telling us what is happening. So when, when somebody says, oh, you didn't tell us, oh, there was going to be a lockdown. He has indirectly. He hasn't just said what it is. So some people think we're fear-mongering. I mean... We're not fear-mongering when you see soldiers walking around and you see tanks on the M1. That's not fear-mongering. Something is definitely going on. So, and there's no reason. I mean, if the, if the rest of the world is doing it, why, why should England or the UK be immune? Why should, the, why should the UK not follow the procedures of the globe? So... And Israel, you know, um, Boris, well, I'm going to put the um, video of Boris's speech on closing the schools today, which talks about the virus and other things. But he was talking about testing a lot and how they're going to test. And Israel actually are using mobile data. And in the contacts, this is the irony. Well, not even the irony, the scary part. They're going to go through everyone's contacts. And if a person has got the virus and that person is in your contact list, they're going to add you as one of those people who possibly is in contact with um, that person and could potentially get the virus. But, you know, as far as you're concerned, it's not intimate people you have on your phone, in your contacts. Me? For my job and what I do, I've got thousands of contacts on my phone. I don't even know half of them. I don't even know who they are or where. Well, not that I don't know who they are, but I don't know where they are or where they live. Because suppose some one of my contacts catches the virus and I haven't bloody seen them for years or whatever. That, you know, call me to be tested. It's absolutely, you know, their methods of testing and getting information, it, it baffles me. It really baffles me. I mean, I don't know what planet they're on, not unless, but I think with people like the scientists and the politicians, they probably have very small networks and quite intimate networks. And I don't think it, it comes into their mind that, you know, we live in a kind of electronic, um, well, it should do, but I don't know about you. I don't know if you only have a few people on your phone, a few intimate friends. Last time I looked on mine, I think I've got about 346. And that is because I run a magazine. That is because I'm a DJ. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I don't know. And I'm hoping to do my, I, I do my show, my reggae show, the last Friday of the month on www.loversrockradio.com. The details are always below anyway. Um, but yeah, that might bring a lighter side. I do touch on some of the stuff I do talk about on my channel but not much just in a more light-hearted way 
so yeah my dear that's what you can expect um from the lockdown and what the suggestion that everyone what you need to obey and follow strictly by the rule is everybody must follow the advice to protect themselves and also the wider population and that is stay at home if you develop symptoms and you must stay at home for seven days um, if you have a high temperature and a continuous new cough um, the whole household to stay at home for 14 days if one member thinks they've got the coronavirus avoid unnecessary gatherings avoid pubs restaurants clubs bars theaters cinemas working from home funny they don't say buses and tubes that, don't you think that's a bit strange and coaches national coaches I think that's a bit weird and that's what somebody else was saying you know you're you're telling us to stay away from people and socially distance ourselves but you know we're still supposed to get on the trains Oh, but that's because uh, essential work people have to go to work. I mean, make your bloody mind up. And then he talked about washing hands. The goal is to test 25,000 per day, scaling up the testing capacity. So I wonder if they're going to follow Israel's way of testing and see who's been, who's on, who's on your phone, because, you know, this would be a, a good reason to access everybody's contacts. I mean, I just think it doesn't. It's just not logical. Well, it's not logical for me anyway. And then they're talking about the retired are coming in to help. But aren't they considered the most vulnerable? It's a lot of contradictions. Anyway, I think, um, I think that is all. I am going to say. So, have a wonderful day. And don't get too bogged down in all what's going on. Well, you can you can watch it, but just don't watch it too much. Don't get too pulled into it. Because I tell you something, if you watch too much of it, you get a headache. I had a headache this morning. But I guess that's because I do need to kind of research it and listen. And then it kind of thinks, oh my God. I need a break from it now. Uh, I'm going to look for some happy subjects. <laughs> some subjects about peace and love and harmony. Anyway, have a wonderful day. Take care now.